breakthrough was to treat time as a fourth dimension, a dimension in which it may be possible to travel just like traveling across a city. Imagine Professor Millet gets an invitation to a meeting in New York City. Thanks. To make sure he gets to the meeting, the invitation must have a number of pieces of information on it. First, he needs a street number. Since New York is laid out on a grid, that number will give him a position in the north-south direction. Next, he needs the avenue, in this case, Fifth Avenue, which gives him a position in the east-west direction. So far, he has found the unique location of the meeting in two directions, or dimensions. Now he needs another piece of information to tell him where the meeting is in the third dimension. But of course, the position in three dimensions is not enough to make sure he gets to the meeting. The invitation must also carry a fourth piece of information, the time. Four pieces of information specifying a single event in four dimensions, three of space and one of time. So here is a single event in space and time, or as scientists call it, space-time. Treating time as a dimension means that scientists can not only consider time travel logically, they can also explain why it seems so utterly confusing to us. Suppose that there is a world that has only two dimensions, like this piece of paper, and that there are beings that can only live in this two-dimensional world. They can conceive of length and width, but they cannot conceive of the third dimension, height. What would they make of a three-dimensional object like this paper clip if I introduced it into their world? To them, it will appear as though the object came out of nowhere. They can't conceive of the fact that it came from a third dimension. And if I pull the object back out of their two-dimensional world into the third dimension, to them, it will have appeared to vanish. In just the same way as a creature from a flat world would see a three-dimensional object doing the impossible, we humans being three-dimensional would see a traveler in the fourth dimension do some very strange things too. Like the paperclip, a time traveler would simply vanish to reappear in another time. And that's not the only strange thing that happens. If I fold this piece of paper over and push the single paper clip through, the people in this world will see this one object in two places. Thanks. That's why time travel, which is travel in the fourth dimension, allows someone to be in two places at once. If a professor could travel back in time, he could be the one who gave himself the invitation to the meeting. It sounds strange to us, but that's because we're not used to seeing travel in higher dimensions.